Welcome to worship this day. I am Pastor Derek Ingfeldt, and I come to you from Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Saratoga, California, on this 5th of July, 2020, in the season of Pentecost, a season of growth. This is our 17th Sunday of virtual distanced worship, and this morning we are blessed with a revelation of our most reliable resource. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, and let us pray. Good, gracious, and glorious God, again we thank you for your faithful and abiding presence. Today we gather from far and wide to praise you for your life-giving word that brings us comfort, hope, and inspiration. Lift our spirits in praise before you now, for you alone are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. Amen. And now please enjoy the music, Beautiful Savior, by Dale Wood, played by our own Elizabeth Pintar. Thank you, Elizabeth, for playing that beautiful piece, uh, which encourages and inspires us this day uh, to fix our eyes on Jesus, who is our 
wonderful, beautiful Savior. And as we gather in this way of virtual distanced worship, we do so, of course, because almost three million people here in our country have been affected by this coronavirus, and more than 130,000 have died. More than 10 million worldwide have been affected by this virus. As our communities continue to change, as followers of Christ, let us take care, use caution, and keep the other in mind, being examples of Christ's care and faithfulness in the community. At this time when we are physically distanced, community connection is especially important. If you're watching on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, I do invite you and encourage you to join us following the service for a live gathering via Zoom. It would be good to see you there. I also encourage you to check our church website. Uh, by 9 o'clock each morning, a daily devotion, the Daily Bread, is posted there. I hope it will bring you encouragement and uh, give you hope in these days. Also, you're encouraged to spend that time in prayer with your brothers and sisters in Christ throughout our community. We gather together for live Bible study uh, via Zoom on Wednesdays at 10 and Thursdays at 6.30. On Wednesdays, we are making our way through the Bible. We are currently looking into the prophets to see how their word in their day uh, speaks to our own situation in our day. And in, on Thursdays at 6.30, at that hour, we are making our way through Matthew's gospel account, uh, currently in chapter 2. You are welcome to join us for those gatherings. Please do let us know your needs uh, for grocery shopping, prescription pickup, or anything of the sort. We have people standing by to come to your assistance. And if you have prayer requests that you would like to have included in this virtual worship, or that you would like our community to be lifting up to God, uh, please do email me those prayer requests and they will be included in our gathering. Happy Sweet 16 birthday last Sunday. I neglected to mention to Nathan, uh, we thank God for the gift of you, young man, uh, for the gift you are to our church community, and we will remember you in prayer this Sunday. And thank you all uh, very much for your ongoing commitment to the ministry and mission of our Lord Jesus Christ in and through Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Thank you for reaching out to one another uh, with your love and encouragement. And thank you for the gifts that you pass on to us in this community. Uh, the gifts received through mail or online are very important to us and we appreciate your generosity. And finally, if this service is of benefit to you, please do pass it on. Uh, share the love, uh, share the good news with others. Um, now, on this holiday weekend, uh, please enjoy this music, uh, America, played by Anton.
thank you very much, Anton, for sharing that piece with us. And on this uh, Independence Day weekend, we are most grateful to God for the blessing of our country, for the legacy that has been left to us by our forebears, for the freedoms that we enjoy, for the bounty of this land. We pray to God to give us men and women with servant hearts to lead us in the ways of justice and peace, that we might be a nation that leads the world and serves as shining examples of what it means to care for each other and to extend beyond our borders the blessings that God has so graciously bestowed upon us. And now we turn to Holy Scripture for this Sunday, according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dearly beloved of God, grace, mercy, and peace be to you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, way back when, when we just turned our calendars over to the new year, I shared with the Emmanuel Lutheran Church faith community the vision I believe God had shown me for our church community. To see Jesus more clearly with 2020 vision and to invite others to come to see him too. I am convinced that this is a most worthy endeavor. And perhaps in a very surprising way, this novel coronavirus has enabled us to see Jesus in a way that we might not otherwise have been able to see him, as faithful, trustworthy, and true in the midst of most difficult days. But the hard truth is, it is sometimes very hard for us to see Jesus and to discern the acts of God. There's an uncanny connection between the sinful human heart and eyes that are glazed over with cataracts. Even in this 11th chapter of Matthew, we read that John, God had sent John the Baptist, the messenger who would prepare the way for God's son. But the people could not see. They said he had a demon. We read in this 11th chapter of Matthew that God had sent his son Jesus, but the people could not see. They said he was a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And we see in this 11th chapter of Matthew that Jesus had performed most of his miracles in Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. But the people, again, could not see. They did not understand that the miracles were acts of God, and they did not repent. Yes, it's sometimes hard for us to see Jesus and to discern the acts of God. Well, this morning we receive an invitation directly from our Lord himself, and it is good news. I offer a confession before you this day after coming face to face with this text, it is with great humility that I come before you. And in truth, I come before you each and every Sunday in the same way. For as I come to share with you the word of God, I consider it no small undertaking to speak these words. For as I do, it is my prayer that God would use my words to speak his word to you today for God's word is the word that you need to hear. The passage before us this morning from St. Matthew, the evangelist begins with a prayer of Jesus. And interestingly enough, this is the first prayer of Jesus 
that Matthew records. Well, surely Jesus, as a good Jewish boy, was raised to learn and to recite his prayers. And surely Jesus prayed before this time in his adult ministry. Earlier in Matthew's account, Jesus is shown to be teaching his listeners the Lord's Prayer, words to use when addressing God. And yet, this is the first prayer of Jesus that Matthew records for us here in the 11th chapter. Well, what do we find in these words? What do we find in this first prayer recorded? Jesus addresses his Father here as Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus had already taught the people to address God as our Father. But when he calls upon his Father here, the possessive pronoun is absent, which gives us insight into the unique relationship that Jesus had with his Father. Later in this same passage, Jesus will speak of God as my Father. Indeed, Jesus had taught, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons and daughters of your Father who is in heaven. But his is a unique relationship. He is the Son of God with a capital S, as it had been declared by the voice that spoke from heaven at his baptism. This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Jesus addresses his Father as Lord of heaven and earth, the one in charge, the only one in charge, the ruler over all, the ultimate authority in heaven and on earth. In his first prayer, Jesus praises his Father that he had hidden these things from the wise and learned. The religious leaders could not see these things in John the Baptist, in Jesus, or in the miracles that Jesus performed. But instead, God had revealed them to little children, to the lowly, the humble, the pure in heart. Well, this takes me aback. It humbles me, and it reminds me to be a good Lutheran. For Dr. Luther himself, learned man that he was, confessed that each day when he came to recite the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, he did so before God as a little child. It is this humility that is always needed when we come before our Lord, before we endeavor to open our mouths and speak a word on his behalf. And now Jesus, having offered this brief prayer to his Father, addresses the audience before him. He makes it known that he does not assume his own agenda. In fact, he declares that all things have been committed to him by his Father. He has come to do his Father's will. He acts on his Father's bequest. He serves on his behalf. He is a faithful son. And what specifically does Jesus mention about the work that is his to do? No one knows the Son except the Father, he says. And no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son wills to reveal him. How blessed we are that Jesus opens our eyes to the likeness and character of the Father, who sees when we carry out our righteous deeds in secret, who cares for the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, who knows us so intimately that the very hairs of our head are numbered. My offering to God, a Sabbath day's rest from counting. We pray that Jesus would continue to reveal to us his Father's heart, will, and intention. For in the end, although we can well find God's fingerprints on what he has made, we cannot hope to discover the personal character of God if God does not choose first to reveal himself to us. In the text before us today, we learn that God reveals himself to those who come before him as little children, in and through his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now comes the invitation of Jesus. Come to me, he says. Not come to church, not 
come to the pastor, the guru, or the spiritual leader, but come to me, Jesus says. It is he himself who invites us. It is a personal invitation. I am compelled to accept it. And with everything that is in me, I'm compelled to urge you to accept it with everything that is in you. Come to me, Jesus says. Come to me all who are wearied and burdened. <laughs> are you feeling it today? Feeling a bit weary or a bit burdened in these COVID-19 days? Not knowing when they will end? The Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the churches in Galatia, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Certainly Paul's counsel is consistent with what Jesus offers here in our passage this morning. But Paul goes on to say just a few verses later, each one must carry his own load. So, which is it? Are we to bear one another's burdens or are we to carry our own load? The answer, it is both. A load is a day hiker's knapsack. A burden is an overloaded backpack borne by an inexperienced backpacker. Too much to carry too far. Jesus invites those who are weary under heavy loads to come to him. And now comes the third and final revelation of our passage today. I will give you rest. Come to me, and I will give you rest, Jesus says. Again, Jesus is the one who promises, and Jesus is the one who will deliver. How does this work, practically speaking? We bring it before him in prayer. The simple act of opening your heart and unloading your burdens can result in restful peace and surprising renewal. Going to God in prayer can give you new perspective. The results may surprisingly be that the lens that Jesus will give you through which to see will show you that things are not quite as bad as you had thought. You may think you're carrying an overloaded backpack, but it's just a knapsack after all. Jesus may well awaken you from your complacency, infuse you with needed chain courage, and show you that you become weary just by sitting around. Active exercise energizes the spirit. However, Jesus, on the other hand, may prompt you to downsize from the backpack you're carrying to a knapsack. He may lead you to take something off of your overpiled and overcluttered table and spread out the workload. Jesus also, as you go to him in prayer, will remind you that he is the Savior, that you need not assume his position. Jesus will also bring others into your life. In fact, they may already be there. You just may need to swallow your pride, open your mouth, and let it be known that at this point in time you need some assistance. There should be no shame in admitting that. Well, you might be in great need of rest today. Jesus has promised you that you will find it in him. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, he says. Jesus is sending you a LinkedIn invitation to be yoked to him, to let him ease your burden and to learn from him the way to live a human life as it was designed by the Father to live. You need not carry it alone. What a friend we have in Jesus, wrote the preacher Joseph Scriven from Canada to his mother who resided in Ireland. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, mom. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. You can learn from Jesus by listening to the words recorded in Holy Scripture. 
learn from him the ways of God, and allow his words and his ways to inform, transform, and reorder your life. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, he says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. This is Jesus' self-description, and precious words they are. Many claim to be Christians, many claim to be followers of Christ, but many do not exemplify this spirit, being gentle and humble in heart. Jesus is no taskmaster. He does not forcefully lord it over those in his care. Jesus is gentle. Jesus is no boaster or braggart. Jesus is humble in heart. You will know them by their fruits, Jesus tells us, and the chief indicator, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. All others are pretenders, actors, posers, imposters. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Ah, needed rest for the weary, what joy, what delight, what relief. We are reminded here that Jesus is speaking to a group. He is speaking to a community. You will find rest for your souls, he says. It is a personal invitation, but it is not a private invitation. There are others who are with you on this journey, and that's one of the primary ways that Jesus will give you rest. It is the gift of your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's part of what the church is all about. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light, he tells us. He is the Lord. He can handle anything that comes his way, anything you bring before him. Come to me, Jesus says, and let me help you with that. And when you take the yoke that Jesus offers you, and when you are linked to him, your burden will be manageable and light, for Jesus is at your side. It is sometimes hard to get an up-close and personal look at Jesus. There are far too many who have stood in the way claiming the spotlight for themselves instead of shining the light on him. But hear the words again this morning. May they soothe your soul and impart to you much needed rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen, and thanks be to God. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we bow our hearts in humble adoration, and we give you thanks and praise as we go about your work in this Pentecost season, the season of renewal and growth. We lift before you your servants in need of the assurance of your presence and your touch of healing. We pray for Adam, for Dick and Dawn, for Dorothy, George and family, George and Kimberly, Greg, Jace, Josephine and Sam, May, Nancy and Thelma. We thank you that you are watching over them and keeping them in your good care. As we celebrate our independence as a nation this weekend, help us to be mindful of our dependence on you as we celebrate the freedom that is ours, help us to be mindful of the responsibility you've given us to be examples in our world and to lead the way in the pursuit of justice and peace, kindness, and grace. In these days of COVID-19, we pray especially for those in New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts who continue to bear the brunt of this crisis. We pray that you would be with those who are seeking a cure, working on a vaccine, that you would open their eyes, grant them wisdom, and show them the way. We pray for recovery 
And we pray, O oh Lord, that we would know that we are in your good hands. We thank you also for the wonderful gift you've given to us and those who celebrate their birthdays this coming week. We pray that you would bless them richly in the coming year with all that is good. We thank you for Elizabeth, for Jenny, for Gregory, Mylen, Mark, Nathan, and Nolan, for the gift that each one is to this family of faith. And we pray for Don and Jeannie, for Stephen and Lauren, as they celebrate their anniversaries this week. Continue to draw them close to each other in your love, even as you draw them close to yourself. And Lord God, we lift up to you those in authority over us. This week we pray for our governor here in California, for Governor Newsom, that you would grant your wisdom, guidance, and insight, humility, and strength as he goes about his work with his staff for the benefit of our people here in this state. We also lift before you our sister congregation, St. Luke Church in Sunnyvale, for pastors Bob and Gary and the work that is being done within and beyond their church walls, that you would bless their efforts to your glory. For missionaries Tim and Sarah serving in Turkey, that you would keep them safe, that you would watch over them and you would multiply their efforts. And for the families of those who grieve the loss of loved ones in these days, for the Mautino and Wallace families, we pray for your comfort and your peace. All these things and any others that we ought to lift before you, we do so trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we join together in the prayer, he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us on this 5th of July. And now receive the benediction of God. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing piece today, as we focus our attention on Christ, uh, the center of our faith, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, in Christ alone. Mm -hmm. 